in dr garima here <clears throat> let's straight dive into the adc uh, part 1 questions uh this is one of the questions not not exactly the same question though uh i think a similar question uh based on the same concept was asked in the september 2024 exam so uh, for all the new people who are watching this video i'm solving australian dental council exam uh, part 1 questions here we discuss the scenario and we solve five sub questions exactly how it is given in the exam uh these are all past exam questions uh, gathered to the best of our ability and uh, your chances of passing the exam greatly increases if you solve the mocks uh, again and again and currently we have like 27 of them and i'll add one more based on the september 2024 exam 80% of the paper was repeat from the mocks that i have provided thousands of questions now you know and uh, 20% was new i guess uh, but in every exam some new questions are expected but they are not like absolutely new questions which are like 5% but the rest 15% are lateral questions branching out from the concept that i have discovered uh, i mean i have not discovered i have discussed <laughs> the concepts that i have discussed yeah so uh yeah and uh, i keep on getting emails so it's less because i have already given descriptions of the query that you're looking for uh, but in case it's your first time i have given out all the part 1 study materials except the mock test which for which you'll have to contact me uh, but the rest of the material is present in the file section in the target edc facebook group it's not a free group like uh, you have to uh answer the questions that i have listed once you answer and i'm satisfied by it then i will allow you in the group i don't want type as people to come and start uh, doing nonsense in the group that's why so uh just monitoring it basically so anyways let's start solving this for all the existing people who have already seen my videos and they exactly know what i'm about to do <laughs> so a uh, 16 year old patient presents with spacing between uh, his upper front teeth the first sentence itself what is the keyword here 16 now why that is important because in australia different states have different jurisdict uh, jurisdictions uh for consent so for example a 10 year old child comes you for sure know for whatever treatment you do you'll have to take consent of the parents right but uh, when a child is 14 or 16 depending on the state where he is in either he alone can give consent or he and his parents both have to give consent you get it it's not just the parents consent or just the child's consent now so here the 16 becomes very important because at the age of 16 if that patient is living by himself and uh, is well prepared to cover up the treatment expenses and if that is mentioned in the question then he can give consent himself for any treatment that he chooses to go through if that child or patient i would say a 16 year old uh, they start driving at that age i guess in western countries is living with the parents and is financially dependent on them then you have to take consent of the patient and the parents both only parental consent is not allowed because the child is 16 the patient is 16 and patient's consent is of also importance so that is why that is a key word from the concept point of view okay now let's go back to the question he comes with spacing between his upper front teeth so we are talking about these spaces okay there is a diastema but when you say bilateral spaces it's is this the place where the lateral incisors should have been there Now he wants a restoration to get rid of those bilateral spaces because of course it doesn't look aesthetic. He has no history of extraction and he is happy to leave anterior diastema as it is. So he's okay with this, but he's not okay with this. You get it? He's not, he's not okay with the lateral spaces, but he's okay with the space in the central, which is called as a diastema. Now his lateral incisors are missing since birth, which is confirmed by a recent radiograph within his dental record. So you already probably have an OPG. which has confirmed that he doesn't have lateral incisors at all so basically that investigation is already done taking an opg is a part of an investigation for diagnosis purpose and that particular investigation is already done 
uh, that patient attended the patient attended your clinic with his grandfather so parents are not there the grandfather is there again if the patient's parents are living they are the one who are going to give the consent just because the patient's grandfather has come for any invasive procedure you cannot take his consent you get it for just a checkup for investigations patient's consent is enough the grandfather's consent is acceptable but for any invasive procedure for any big procedure billings the parents consent is needed if parents are alive and the patient is living with them understood remember this consent question will be asked now your clinical examination revealed some missing teeth in his mouth teeth most commonly missing in the oral cavity are now the second line of this question is teeth most commonly missing in an oral cavity are is a basic dental question it has got nothing to do with the main scenario so in adc many questions will be asked just to test your dental knowledge because after all it's a dental exam do not confuse it with the scenario so the teeth which are most commonly missing in the oral cavity are third molars followed by either maxillary lateral incisors or mandibular second premolars different textbooks give different things but i would personally go with and what i have seen in my practice in the general population having been treated thousands of patients and children uh third molar of course is the most missing followed by the mandibular second premolar and then i would place maxillary lateral incisor i have seen many mandibular second premolars missing than i have seen upper maxillary lateral incisors missing understood so here the answer is third molars now what is the preliminary investigation to be carried out before deciding on a replacement option okay so what is the investigation that you will do so suppose the patient comes to you and uh, says i want to replace my lateral incisor spaces so what all investigations will you do the first thing would be the x ray but the x ray is already done right so in the options if if there is a question saying that there is an option saying that let's do an opg and you jump and choose that you are marking a wrong answer because in in this scenario the patient already has an x ray right so that investigation is already done so apart from that what other investigation will you do see whenever so what what options do you have to replace you can give an rpd you can give a cantilever you can give an implant but the child is still 16 so implant is little later and you can give an fpd right so all these options involve you taking either support or doing something on the existing teeth in the mouth before you touch those teeth from where you are going to derive a support you should make sure that you are not the one who is inflicting a damage on it and you have to document that before you even touched those teeth they were vital and healthy so the first thing in any procedure where when you are going to give something to the patient or you are going to perform a procedure you have to do a vitality test you get it make that a part of your clinical practice habit i know i know in internship uh, not always you end up doing vitality test for unless unless you are posted in that endo department uh, if you are in the prosthetic department and you just have to give an rpd you don't do a uh, vitality test on the adjacent teeth and you just take an impression send to the lab make it deliver it blah 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 that is not the right way so the first thing that you should do is document that the teeth where you are going to take the support from or the teeth adjacent to the area where you are going to place the prosthesis are vital and healthy and that you have not done anything wrong and there is a baseline record that they were healthy okay so the first thing that you will do is vitality test to exclude the loss of vitality that might compromise the treatment plan now imagine you had decided to give a cantilever appliance on say central and the canine to 
uh, fix the gap on the lateral incisor and the central had trauma many many years ago and uh, it, it, it maybe it's looking whitish in color the same color as it is but it's actually dead from inside and you are not aware of it because you didn't do the vitality test because you thought it looks healthy there is no caries must be healthy and then you deliver the bridge and uh, the latent bacterial infection because it's necrotic just flared up and the patient came back to you after a week and said doctor you just gave the cantilever bridge and now my tooth is hurting so badly what have you done and you would be like i didn't do anything you know i, I just barely took a support from the tooth and and uh, why is it hurting and and then you take a periapical x-ray and you do vitality test and you were like oh my god it's become necrotic what will the patient say he'll just blame you right he'll just say you made my tooth necrotic do you have anything to defend yourself for it no because you didn't do the vitality test before the tooth cannot become vital in a short span of non-vital in a short span of time it was already non-vital and that's why Whenever the infection had to happen, happened. Unfortunately, it happened when you delivered the appliance. You get it? So, always a vitality test has to be documented. Even though you may find it boring, even though you may find it a ridiculous activity, an extra step, do it for the safety of yourself. And to document, of course, that this tooth was nice. Because, say, in case it was non-vital, you would have informed the patient first, got an endo treatment done, and then did the treatment, right? So that's the right way to do so investigate properly periapical radiograph mounting study models measuring diastemal space later on the preliminary investigation preliminary initial first are the keywords remember the keywords the entire exam is based on the adjectives and keywords which is the initial step the best management the utmost importance, the impending diagnosis, the preliminary investigation, that is going to make you choose the answer. Because whenever such a question comes, which is the preliminary investigation, it means that all the options would be investigations of some or the other kind. So all the options are correct, but which is the first option that you're going to choose? That becomes the answer. You understand? So, uh, yeah. Remember, so when you're going to give the exam, let my voice come in your head. Read the keyword. That will decide whether you clear the exam or not. Correct? Next question. Who will be legally responsible to give a consent for this patient's treatment? See, we were just discussing about it and the sub-question pops up. Definitely, whenever, whenever a question is mentioning an age which is below the age of 18, it has to deal with some form of consent, uh, consent. Just remember that. So knowing which age who can consent is very, very important. So who will be legally responsible to give a consent for this patient? Legally responsible, okay. Grandfather, mom or dad, foster parents, dentist, the patient and the parents. The dentist is not the consent giver. You are a provider. You will not give consent. You will just give consent to the treatment that you, you perform, right? <laughs> now, where you can be confused. Foster parents. The question did not mention foster parents. We are not going to come to that. Uh, patient and his parents. His mom or dad and his grandfather. Now see. If the age was 10. Then the answer would be his mom or dad. If the question mentioned uh, the patient lives with his grandfather. The parents are not there. Then the answer would be for a 10 year old grandfather only. But when the patient is 16, it's either the patient, if he is financially independent and does not live with his parents or family, and he understands absolutely what the procedure is all about and can cover the treatment expenses, then he alone can give. But if he is living with his parents and grandfather, then he and his parents will give. So always the patient should also give and on top of it, the parents will give. So here the option, if it was there, just the patient, I will still not choose that because I have a better option, the patient and his parents. A 17 and 18 year old, only the patient is enough. Then the parents are not required, even if the patient is staying with the parents, you know. So only grandfather, no, because the patient also has to be included in it. If the option was patient and his grandfather, 
I would still not choose that because I do have the option of patient and his parents. So my priority will be patient and his parents, then, then just the patient himself and then any other legal guardian which is appointed as it is. Unless the question is mentioning the grandfather is the legal guardian. You understand? So that is how it is. 10 year old only parents, 14 year old patient and parents, 16 year old patient alone or patient and parents depending on the scenario. What is the most appropriate cost effective and long term treatment option for this patient in five years time providing he declined the implant option? Now, very important question. This is why, because when it says what is the most appropriate, my keyword is most here, which also means that because I have an adjective keyword, I will have all the options which are correct. I have to choose which is the most appropriate. Now, I don't only have to choose which is the most appropriate. I also have to choose cost effective and I have to choose long term also okay so I have three filters in my question now most appropriate would be the implant but the question mentions that he has declined the implant option so I don't no longer have the option so so let's just figure out what all options we have we have options of FPD we have cantilever we have RPD and we have implant and we have veneer buildups Veneer buildups is not going to work out because you are not going to increase the size of the teeth by so much just to cover the gap. It's a huge gap. So that is out of the question. Implant is already declined. We are, we are remaining with three options. FPD, cantilever and RPD. Most appropriate. Okay. Let's start with option one. FPD is appropriate. I can say yes, it is. Is it cost effective? No. FPD is very expensive. Is it long term? Yes. So the filter of cost effective is not being uh, satisfied by FPD. So I'm going to keep it on the side. Let's go with cantilever. Is it most appropriate? You can say so. Is it cost effective? Yes. Is it long term? At least for five years? Yes. A cantilever can stay for five years. Yes. RPD. Is it most appropriate? No. Why? Because it is removable and, and you want something which is fixed. So it is not most appropriate. Is it cost effective? Yes. Is it long term? Why not? RPD can last for a long, long time, but it is not most appropriate. It's it's like a compromise because you will have to remove RPD and it's, it's going to cause some psychological stress because the patient wants something fixed, right? So I'm stuck between fixed, fixed and cantilever. And here the cost effective option goes with the cantilever. Hence, that is my answer of choice. This is how you solve a question. By reading it carefully, by understanding what the question is asking, by keeping your brains very alert and self-aware and not like be lost in some thoughts or just focus on one part. Read the entire question. Understand the filters. You understand? It's like buying a dress, you know, you're going for a wedding and you want to buy a dress. You are like, I want this color. I want this design. I want this budget. After you give all these options, the shopkeeper will go and take out exactly all those designs which are your requirements. All the dresses in the shop would be there, but it's your specificity that he is going to look after. Similarly, you have many options for treatment, but, but the patient is saying, I want this, this, this. So in that, 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 whatever fits, you're just going to present that to the patient. Get it? Now, last sub-question. Uh, which is the main factor upon which this treatment option depends for its detection? Perfect. Okay. Why, why, why am I smiling? So you see question number four and question number five are interlinked because what is question number five? Question number five is asking you that whichever treatment option you choose, how and on what that treatment option is going to derive its retention from. Now, for example, if you would have chosen fixed fixed bridge. So not only you will be marking that answer wrong, you'll be answer you'll be marking question number five also wrong because your 
answer of five is dependent on what you chose in option four. So these two questions are so interlinked that if you mark one wrong, you're going to mark the other wrong also. So in such questions, you double make sure that the previous question that you've marked is very, very correct. So here, for example, if I had marked fixed fixed bridge, then in my mind, I would be what is my fixed 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 bridge FPD is basically going to derive its attention from. And then my answer would be amount of the enamel on the prepared abutment teeth or full encircling of the abutment teeth. Correct. So I would choose option B more than option C. I would not choose option A because class and occlusal and incisal receipts would depend on RPD and I have not chosen RPD. So my answer would be B, correct? Because I've chosen FPD. Now, if I would have chosen the option of RPD, then my answer would be A because then what I have to do with the cement and stuff, I'm, I'm not using that. I'm just using an RPD, a cast partial dent basically. And I just need the occlusal rest and the clasp arms. So my retention would be dependent on that. And if I would have chosen the option B, which is the cantilever, then that, that is the right answer. So in cantilever, then what are my retention factors? My retention factors are the amount of enamel on the prepared tooth. Because if you all know, I am sure you all know how a cantilever looks like. It has two wings and an abutment. So those wings go on the palatal surface of the tooth and you micro etch the enamel by preparing it at least by 0.5 to 1 mm and then micro etching it. Those wings will fit there and the abutment would stay and the wings would fit there. How? You're going to glue it with a very good resin cement. So that resin cement will also act as my retention. So my answer here would be E, option E, that is C and D options, amount of enamel on the prepared abutment tooth and the cement type. So you see for each option that I would have chosen in question four, my answer in question five would be according to that, right? So if I mark option four wrong, I automatically mark option five wrong also. So, uh, yeah, that that's how it is. So in the September 2024 exam, which just ended like 10 days ago, not even 10 days, it was on 11 and 12, like five days before, uh, there was a question on a missing central incisor. I still haven't got that full question, but it's based on the same concept. For example, I'm, I mean, there could be many, I can, I can fabricate so many questions out of this concept. Like say a central incisor is missing. The child is 15 or 16. Only one central incisor is missing. What will you do? Yeah, I can ask the same questions. What are your modes of replacement? Are you going to go with an implant? What is your choice? Cost effective, long term? Who's going to give the consent? And uh, what investigations you'll do? And I might change the question saying that the patient came to you for the first time. Now, what is your preliminary investigation? Then my answer would be IOPA first. IOP or OPG, whichever is given just to see if it is impacted inside or not. And suppose I can also formulate this question in a way and ask in the exam that there is a missing central incisor, but on the IOP it shows that it's impacted deeply and the child is a 12 year old. Now, what are you gonna do? So then you'll be like, okay, refer to the orthodontist, refer to the oral surgeon. What is your investigation of choice after you have the OPG? And I would say CBCT, just to see how much bone is covering, how much the root is developed, etc. So anything uh, I can formulate from missing teeth and you will get a scenario of missing teeth and you should get a scenario of missing teeth because in your clinical practice, you will encounter a case of missing teeth and you should know what is the best options according to the age of the patient. You cannot give an implant to a 10 year old. You'll send them to the orthodontist to figure out the options. You can have a 20 year old with a missing tooth and you can give an implant if it's missing inside. You understand? So depending on the age, there can be so many permutations and combinations happening. So I hope this is clear and I hope this helps you solve the way you realize, analyze keywords, 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 meditate on keywords, most important, preliminary examination, the best option, the most cost effective option, blah, 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 all adjectives. Start talking in adjectives at home. Start telling your uh, mother, you are the most beautiful woman on earth. Start telling your father, you are the most responsible. 
tell your brother you do everything except this you know like that <laughs> so when you start using these keywords in your day to day life you'll identify it in the exam the purpose is solving the exam getting cured by any means necessary right so anyways have a nice day i'll go and fetch my son from nursery bye bye